Hi there, this is Becky, and I wanted to show you around Excel a little bit and help you figure out some strategies for reducing your data. Reducing your data is the method you typically use when you're starting um, to look at your uh, research or assessment data, and you want to simplify it and order it or categorize it in a way that will help you conduct your analyses. So what I'm looking at here is an Excel spreadsheet that was given to me by Central Piedmont Community College. Um, and it is a documentation of reference interactions uh, that were taken over the course of two semesters, so an academic school year, uh, two, uh, during two week intervals per each semester to get a snapshot of uh, the activities that happen at the reference desk. So looking here, I see I have ID, start date, start time, duration, entered by, desk, we have reference short, and we have some different choices here, 20 plus reference, that's a, a reference interaction that took 20 minutes or more, directional, that's uh, where is something, a computer short question, usually that's software support, or computer 20 minutes or more question. So let's get rid of things that we don't need. And before I do that, I usually make an extra copy of my data so that I have a clean copy somewhere saved that I'm not working on, working on, and then I have my working copy. In case I do something terrible and mess the data up, I can always go back to the original file. So here I see ID. That doesn't mean anything to me, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Start date. Um, that's the date of the interaction. I want to track that in the time. I want to track that. In this duration field, it looks like it's empty throughout, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that column. So I just click, then right click, and delete. So now I'm left with 1,560 records of um, reference transactions that I might be interested in. And now I think it would be interesting to me to, um, to turn these these um, dates over here. I'm curious if we could see any differences in reference usage if we put them in as days of the week and then um, also times of the year. So to do that, I'm going to add a new column and I'm going to create a new category. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking in the next column over and I right click and I insert. So now I have a new column. Let's call that day of the week. And when I'm creating a new category, I usually like to put the code up here. So one equals Sunday, two equals Monday, three equals Tuesday. So now let's look back and see what day of the week April 4th was. So I'm going to my calendar just track back, backtracking to see what April 4th was a Friday. So all of these things that say 4 4 2014, we're going to put a 6 in there. Not That's actually a, a date of a 6. I don't want that. I want all of these items to be just basic numbers. So I'm going to highlight this row, this column, right click, and say Format Cells. And I just want it to be a number with no decimal places. All right. So I have a 6 in here, and I'd like everything that's labeled 4-4-2014 to have a 6 as well. So I'm going to grab this corner of this cell that looks like a plus and drag it down until... I have all of my 4 for 2014s covered. Okay, so now that I've entered in all of the days of the week and given them a code, I'm now going to create a new worksheet on my spreadsheet by uh, going to the bottom of the screen and clicking on Sheet 1. And I'm going to set up a little, a little um, table here that will help me document and count the uh, number of transactions or number of reference interactions documented on any given day of the week. So I'm 
typing in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I actually realized that um, there is no Sunday documentation, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that row. All right, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six here to correspond with the numbers in our um, the other worksheet. And to calculate frequencies or how many times something happens, I'm going to go here and click on this blank cell for Monday. And I'm going to click on formulas. And then I'm going to go over here and click on more functions. Select statistical. I'm going to scroll over and then down and I'm looking for count if. So I'm going to click on count if. Now I see I have a few choices here. For the range, we're actually going to, I'm going to leave that cursor in there, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the worksheet tab down below for where my data is existing. And I'm going to click up here under B to highlight the whole column. And now I see the range says report, and it uh, points me to the report, the data we just looked at. And then I have B colon B. So what we need to do here is for the first B, indicate what row that data starts, and it starts in row 2, and what row the data ends. And I see down here it's 1560. In this first time, we want to count everything that comes up a 1, which is Monday. And then I hit OK. And that does not look right. I'm going to go back and see if there are any ones. Oh, one is Sunday, and we did not do any Sundays. So I need to re-tabulate um, my data here. So our days of the week actually start 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So now I'm going to go back here, and I'm looking at my information here where it says comma 1. It was looking for all the ones. We realized there are none. So I'm going to back up, backspace, and put in two here. And now I see I have 358 reference interactions or reference transactions on Mondays that were documented during the uh, documentation period. Let's do the same for Tuesdays. So I'm going to hit, I'm still under formulas, more functions, statistical. I'm going to go to count if. I'm going to Click the worksheet down below. Okay. Click here. I'm going to fill in my B's. Remember, it's B2 is where row 2 is where things start, and row 15, 16 is where they stop. And this time we're looking for anything that has a 3 in that column. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing that. I'm going to go ahead and finish doing that for the other days of the week. Okay, so now I have everything tallied up, and I'm going to calculate a total of uh, in total interactions. So to do that, I just like to type in a equals, and then I type the word sum, and then I do a uh, left part of a parenthesis. I highlight all the rows I care about, and close the parenthesis hit enter and I see I have 1,555 transactions and now I'm curious um, what the percentage is. This will help me um, determine what the most busy days of the week are. So let's see, to do that I'm going to, first I'm going to highlight this row and then I'm going to right click and say format cells, choose per percentage and I'm going to go ahead and have two decimal places and press OK. So now I can just simply type in equals, click on the number, the frequency for Mondays, divided by the total, 1555. And now I can see that 23% of my transactions occur on Mondays. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other items. I click on, I type equals, click the cell with the frequency, then I do a, a slash on my keyboard, 
and click total and enter. Okay, so now I've calculated percentages so we can see which days of the week are busier than others. And just uh, giving this a quick glance, I see that Mondays and Wednesdays tend to be slightly busier than Thursdays, but very close. And Tuesdays would be kind of second in line. Fridays, uh, things taper off almost by 50%. And Saturdays, the reference transactions are nearly negligible. Now, if I want to see how this looks in a pie chart, I'm just going to show you the, the very basics, and I'll do another tutorial to help you learn how to um, make things look a little fancier. But what I'm going to do here is I am going to actually hide these two columns. So I'm highlighting them, and I right-click and hide. So now I'm just looking at percentage and day of the week, and then I'm going to highlight the days of the week and percentage. And then I'm going to go to Insert, Pie Chart, and here we go. And, um, you know, we can certainly add labels, change information, etc. But now you can see this in a visual display.